for your goodness to us, for your graciousness. We thank you for revealing yourself to us in your word. We would be lost in trying to understand you if it wasn't for your word. And we thank you for for your complexity, that, that you are so much bigger than we are. And um, thank you that when we think we've got you figured out, that you come and show us more and, and uh, keep uh, expanding our, our uh, understanding and, and delight in you. Thank you for your word. And as we look at some things that seem at first to be contradictions in your word today, um, help us to appreciate your beauty and your majesty, and, and to, at the end of the day, just come and say, this is what you revealed about yourself. We believe it, and to give you permission to be um, bigger than our minds can handle in some ways. And so we thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for your spirit that changes us and opens the scripture to us. We pray that you would be honored and point us to Jesus today. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You're bigger than our minds can comprehend. Okay, so we're on lesson seven, and let's see. Okay, Kira, you don't have one of them. We're, we don't have any more of these little books. What book is it? It's um, a study guide for John Piper's Pleasures of God. Um, so I think we might have an extra copy at home. Right? You're here next time, though, Fred. But uh, the objectives for the lesson today are, first of all, be able to embrace the vision of God's providence that Joseph had in Genesis 50, 20. Second, to understand the distinction between God's secret and revealed wills. And third, to begin to grasp the depths of the complexity of God's emotional life. So, um, this is actually part two. As you recall, lesson six was part one of God's pleasure in all that he does. And this is part two, lesson seven. Um, and as you remember, we kind of uh, we're tight for time last week. For you know, three of you were here last week. Um, good morning. Uh, was there any other comments? First of all, any comments you had left over from last week? We watched the, the video with John Piper talking about how, at the end of the day, uh, the guy's the one that decides what happens to us. We can pick the best surgeon in town, but the guy's the one that guides his hands. Any other comments that anybody had left over from last week before we? Press on to this week's lesson. Okay. And then for the questions in this week's study guide, is there any questions that stood out to you as being particularly interesting or confusing? In lesson seven. Questions that stood out as being particularly insightful. Um, on page 64, mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, was Satan in heaven when, um, when God was talking to him about Job? Or they, it's just this realm, and it's not really a place. So wherever they spoke, I don't know. It sounds like he was in heaven, didn't it? Yeah. He came to present himself along to some of God or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to think about, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts from this week's homework? of God's emotional life. Can we define emotions? No, mm -hmm. I'm asking the teacher. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for crying. <laughs> All I can say is I'm glad it was you this week. <laughs> Where's my hotline? Yeah. Um, there's a certain amount of territory that comes when we stand in front of a group. Yeah, yeah, in terms of defining emotions. Uh, Just pretend you're tea party and you'll be all okay. 
<laughs> Emotions is what's arousing when you're asked a question like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not trying. I'm not trying to get yeah. him. He has a okay. I want to make sure that that's perfectly clear. But that's a a question that I think needs answered here. They're 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 placing this in the context of God's emotional life. Do we know what emotions are? Feelings. And are and are, and are our emotions the same as God's emotions? Yes or no? God's emotions are always God's emotions are always being righteous, whereas ours are often are yeah. not. And God's so that that was the reason why I asked. Okay. Let's define emotions. Mm -hmm. That's we yeah. have to go with what's revealed in Scripture. Oftentimes, there are sometimes like uh, God has a righteous anger. It grieved God that He made man mm -hmm. back when Noah, uh, you know, when the flood, right before the flood, he, he, he was grieved. Uh, and then the understanding of we are to fear God in, in Proverbs. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we are humans, so we have an understanding of what our emotions are, but oftentimes those aren't the same as what God's are. So we just have to go with what's revealed in Scripture as a good cessationist would. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. I see where you're coming from, brother. <laughs> you got everybody's welcoming me back after two, two weeks of vacation. My goodness. Do you, you have a word of prophecy on it? <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. So, so what are our emotions? I mean, he gave us a, you know, brief list on some of the emotions that God expresses. Mm -hmm. Anger. I heard anger. Mm -hmm. Right, Jim? Well, I, I heard, heard anger. anger. Yeah. yeah. He was uh, angry. And so, so, I mean, we can we can Great. go to the sun. Because it's, Great. Because, uh, pleasure. 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 God. I mean, so we can start putting some, hanging some stuff on this mm -hmm. as far as what God's emotions are. Um, but I think that needs to be answered because People will automatically, at least I am automatically assuming that God's emotions are the same as my emotions. And it should be the other way around. That, that's what that, and that's where I'm trying to, to go here is once we say, okay, here's a human characteristic, okay, is God's characteristic the same? Or if it's not the same, how is it different? Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to help me understand who God is or what God's uh, emotional response is going to be at any given situation. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, and it's helpful to think about that. There are certain areas, and I think we might have talked about this the first week, the, very, the introductory week. Um, there are certain emotions that God has that we should seek to conform our emotions to. And there are certain emotions, I think especially of righteous anger, that I'm not sure it's possible for us as humans to ever really have. And God says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. So I think there's a sense in which some of God's emotions are ones we shouldn't seek to uh, emulate, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But but in general, what I'm saying is we should, instead of using our emotions as a template for God's, we should use God's emotions as kind of a pattern for how we should, especially okay. looking at So is it okay for us to get angry? So I would say no. Mm -hmm. okay. But God got angry. Right. So there, do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, angry and sin not. Grieve. <laughs> God grieved. Can we grieve? Yeah. So there's some that we should mm -hmm. and some that we shouldn't. Mm -hmm. But if we do get anger, we can say it's right to say, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, then that would be a lie. And that's yeah, the characteristic of God. Right. I think it's like in our sanctification it's a process that we're becoming more and more. In Second Peter, I was looking for words, where by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent provinces so that by then we may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. So we, we can become more and more, we partake of the divine na nature in a greater way when we have our glorified body, like Jesus does. Then we'll have more. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll never be the same, mm -hmm. even then. When we see you, we will be like him. Yeah. yeah. We don't want to be. God or no, the no. same. Exactly. So I think those come along with it. The, the attributes of God is a great Bible study. Okay. To learn all those and go through all the scripture and find all the attributes of God that we've been that have been revealed to us. 
And that gives insight into his character and into <coughs> his attributes, in which uh, sometimes his uh, emotions are made manifest by learning those. Does that make sense? It's true, yeah. I remember we did, like three years ago, we did a study on, and I think it was Jim and Craig. Is that what did, did you? I did one with the kids. kids. Okay, yeah. yeah. Through the anyway, that, that was a wide section. Oh, wow. That was really a good study, I, I, I recall. Mm -hmm. And talking about the attributes they call communicable and incommunicable, mm -hmm. the ones that are attributes of God that we can of God that we can have and the ones that we can't have mm -hmm. as humans and distinguishing them. So so you're right, it does tie into emotions um, to some extent too. Yeah. And, and the problem is always gonna be that we can never match that level. I mean, God's emotions are totally different than our we have a small taste of that, but we wanna always put him in that box with us and mm -hmm. say, you know, he's he's got these type of emotions mm -hmm. and, and that's that's a wrong way of thinking. We could think of the, the pagan, um, like the Greek gods and things like that, where they basically created gods that were just kind of superhumans with mm -hmm. the, the same emotions of, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, that were uh, unrighteous emotions. They weren't really gods. They were just humans with different yeah. powers, I guess. Right. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I guess God's emotional life, to me anyway, since he is perfect, absolute, and needs nothing to be complete, completed, his emotions are absolutely perfect, mm -hmm. pure, mm -hmm. pure. So, you know, when I'm trying to figure out what God's emotional life is like, I'm thinking there is no error there. There's no feeling something and having it be a wrong feeling. Mm -hmm. but because so often our emotions can be based on something that's not really true, whereas mm -hmm. God's emotions would always be based on truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good, so thank you. I'm not sure if I ever defined emotions, but... Well, but I think once the group starts talking about it, then I think the, the question starts getting answered after a while. The, the, the underlying question. Yeah. yeah. So and, 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 and so we, I think we did kind of divide God's emotional life and our emotional life in two categories. Mm -hmm. Ours is a um, non-perfect, his is a perfect. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think that's a big distinction for yeah. us to see as we examine what he, yeah. Piper's trying to get across to mm -hmm. us here. Yeah. That's a good point, because I think there are two different definitions. I think for God's emotions and our emotions, mm -hmm. there are two different definitions. Good. I'm going to jump to the invisible. Wow, that time goes fast. It does, <laughs> especially when you have a lot to cover. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Let me see which one of these I should get. Because uh, there's the last four questions. 7, 8, 9, and 10. He doesn't really cover in the video, so I'm going to... Let's see here. Let's just look at... Let's just do number, number uh, 7. Up there on page 67. And he gives uh, two verses from Acts. I'll read both of those. And then he asks a couple questions about these. So, this is talking about two wills. Um, God's two wills. Uh, Acts 2.23, this Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. And then Acts 4.27 and 28, for truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. So then the question they ask is, how do these two passages describe on the one hand the will of Jesus' opponents, and on the other hand, the will of God in the crucifixion. Which of God's wills is carried out in the death of Jesus? His revealed moral will or his sovereign secret will? Okay. Can I touch that? Jesus' opponents um, were not acting upon the moral will of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were disobeying. Contrary. They were contrary yeah, to the moral will. Um, in his crucifixion, that was God's decree of will. Mm -hmm. It was decreed before time that that happened. That he used his opponents to bring about his will. Mm -hmm. yeah, sure. his. It's kind of mind blowing, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. they, were, they were disobeying God, mm -hmm. but yet they carried out in the end. They wanted, if, even in their rebellion against God, God turned them around and used it against them. If you, I see the sovereignty of God there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a total sovereign God. Yeah. Because they are not all knowing, right? And God is. Mm -hmm. So no matter what you do, he's going to have the upper hand. Yeah. 
Don't play chess with God, right? Yeah. yeah. Isn't there a prime example of the sovereignty of God? If one were to pick, hey, this is the model of how God's sovereignty runs our lives and runs the world, mm -hmm. that's a pretty good model right mm -hmm. there. Yeah, it's the, the supreme example. I mean, he uses, like, you know, Joseph, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. You can hit that in the video. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's the crucifixion of Jesus is just the supreme example because it's the greatest crime, you could say the greatest crime, and the greatest victory of God's will at the same time. So, and Jesus was giving hints way before it. Yeah, yeah. Tell them, like, here's what they're going to do. Yeah. And here's when they're going to do it. And, yeah. <laughs> and they still did it. Before telling them, yeah. yeah. It's not them doing it. It's, it's God's will that this is. Yeah. And God's own timing. Okay, so we'll go ahead and watch the DVD. And we'll have, it's about 21 minutes um, this time, so we'll have some time afterwards to talk. Um, and just a reminder, if you have your workbook, to fill in the blanks on page 73.